FCE, Dan O'Gan is on deck. All right, thanks. Uh, I'm Andrew Rasweller from Florida State University. I'm speaking here for the uh, Morea Coral Reef LTER. Our news is that we were renewed in 2022. This is the list of PIs here. Russ is with us today. And um, Morea is an island with 60 kilometers of coastline, but for most of the history of the site, we've really been focused on six uh, research at six sites uh, spread around the island. Um, and that research has been spread across different habitats, but here I'm really gonna focus on the lagoon habitats. So these are the habitats between the shoreline and the reef crest, and particularly on shifts that we've observed in these habitats from coral dominance to macroalgal dominance. And we've done a ton of small scale work on this. So caging and manipulation and other kinds of experiments to understand competition between coral and algae at small scales. We know that top-down uh, forces can be really important. So herbivorous fish are eating the algae. If you exclude or remove the fish, you get switch, uh, switches into the algae-dominated state. We also know that bottom-up forces are really important. So if an area is enriched with nitrogen, you're more likely to get algae taking over. And we've been working now to figure out how to scale from these processes that are happening at the scale of meters to understand how pattern is emerging at lagoon scales, so at hundreds or thousands of meters. One of the challenges is that the, um, the landscapes here are quite uh, uh, variable. So if you were to swim through these lagoons, you'd pass through areas that were just flat sand, you'd pass through other areas which were really healthy coral dominated structure, and then other areas where all the coral was dead and had been replaced by bushy macroalgae. And both the coral and the macroalgae rely on this like emergent structure. So these boulders might be a couple meters across, and they're like covered with coral or with macroalgae. Um, and if you swim across the lagoons, you'd find some areas have lots of this habitat and some don't have very much. And we're really at a stage here where we're trying to like collect data at larger spatial scales, figure out how to get useful of the data at larger spatial scales to understand these processes at lagoon and island-wide scales. Uh, solution one we've been working on is remote sensing. This is sort of the obvious one. The good news is that remote sensing has been great for telling us where the habitat is. So you can just see it with your eyes. That light blue is sort of sand and low relief. Uh, the sort of dark speckled areas are boulders of habitat. The problem is so far, no one has been able to solve the problem of telling whether something is coral or macroalgae. So we can tell where the habitat is from, from space, but we can't actually tell if we're looking at a healthy coral reef or at sort of an X coral reef, which is now completely dominated by macroalgae. Solution two has been uh, to actually put the camera in the water. So this is something my lab has been working on a lot um, to sort of cut out the air water interface. We did this originally with swimmers, just like towing cameras around. More recently, we've been using these robot boats. And uh, so we've collected 750,000 photographs of benthic substrates in Morea now. I don't have enough undergrads to look at those photographs, so this is only useful because we're using computer vision to identify key genera of coral and macroalgae and key substrates. Solution three is just to do more work at more places. So we had a team that went to almost 200 sites around the lagoon and collected uh, data on nutrients at those sites. So we now have these comprehensive uh, island-wide maps of nutrient enhancement um, or enrichment, I guess. Um, and we're continuing to visit a lot of those sites annually to keep collecting data on nutrients, temperature stress, and on uh, uh, ecosystem state. Solution four has been to engage community partners. And so the coastal communities in Morea are very involved in, uh, very interested in the health of their lagoons. We've actually gotten a lot of cooperation from fishers uh, in Morea who have shared photographs of their catch and also these GPS uh, tracks of exactly where they're fishing. So we know where they're fishing and what they're catching. Most of the catch is herbivorous fish. So this is giving us data about these like top down uh, uh, stresses on the system, which would have been really, really hard for us to collect in any other way. One surprise that's emerged from this is that um, when we look at the patterns of these anthropogenic top down and bottom up stressors around the island, they're not correlated either at large or small um, either at island scale or lagoon scale. So some locations have a lot of fishing stress, other locations have a lot of nutrient stress, some locations have both. Uh, and I'll just finish by saying, obviously we're also using mathematical modeling, like this is a big push to try to integrate this data we're collecting at large spatial scales which what we know, with what we know about processes at small spatial scales. Thank you.